So Andre, you've been making quite the racket over Mario Tennis Aces and how it's just been looking really good from everything we've seen so far. And you finally got the chance to go hands on with it. So right off the bat, what did you actually think about your time with Aces? Right off the bat? What sport do you think we're covering here, Derek? I, hey, I already used my racket puns, so I gotta work with what I got. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. I'll allow it. So yeah, I got to play Mario Tennis Aces for about 40, 45 minutes or so last week in Nintendo, and in that time I got to do some exhibition matches and got a pretty good look at the story mode too, where I went through a couple of regions, including a boss fight, and just got better, you know, better understanding of um, what's going into story mode, like all the challenges and the actual plot. There's actually a plot here, which is kind of <laughs> crazy in the Mario Tennis game. And then also, you know, it gave me a better look or better understanding of how the new mechanics work, like zone shots or all the zone moves, in fact. Um, as well as trick shots and all that. And, perhaps most importantly, I got to play as Chain Chomp, Derek. Ah, oh, lucky. <laughs> By the way, what's amazing is when he's serving, he actually bounces the ball on top of his head while he's waiting to serve. It's oh my so god, good. that's adorable. <sighs> fantastic. It's fantastic, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Just 10 out of 10 right out of there. I don't even right need to talk bat. about the rest of it. Just uh, <laughs> Chain Chomp right there, we're done. That's it, we're done here. Uh, I suppose we should talk about the game a little bit. So, eh. eh. <laughs> Tell me about those mechanics, because uh, obviously you're talking about all the different zone shots you can do or zone moves, and uh, is, it, is it a lot to keep track of? Is it easy to sort of wrap your head around, or is there just too much here? Because it took a while for them to do every, talk about everything in the direct. Yeah, they spent a good chunk of time just explaining the mechanics. So I won't go into too much of it here, because Nintendo's already done a pretty good job. But as one who actually who was playing the game for the first time, it can be a little bit daunting at first, just because there is a fair amount to remember here. But it's all pretty simple. Basically, all the zone stuff is put on the R button to it to my memory. Um, so for a zone shot, for instance, you just have to run to the star-shaped symbols up here on the ground. Press R once you're there, and you do the zone shot. And then once uh, you're doing the first-person shooting or aiming, I guess it's, it kind of <laughs> feels like a shooter actually. Um, you just you can either use a right control stick or motion controls to just aim the shot where you want. Uh, beyond that, you can hold R at any time to do the zone speed. Just slows everything down, uh, making it easier to get to your opponent's own zone shots if they're shooting at you or any other shot if you want. Um, on top of this, you can also block shots with a perfectly timed hit. That way you don't take damage to your opponent's zone shot, which is a big thing with them, of course. You, when you're using a zone shot, you can inflict damage and then actually break their racket. So really, it almost feels like a fighting game of points because you effectively have HP and lives with, with your racket counter. So that's really the, the cool thing about this is, is it feels like a really good Mario Tennis game with a, with a fighting game mechanic layered on top. So it really makes you think about this in a whole new way. Um, so yeah, to, to get back to your question, there is a lot to take in, and I did have trouble remembering to do everything, but even over the course of my 40 minutes, I was starting to get more used to the mechanics, and starting to better understand when and how to use you know, each of them. So so yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve, but I think once you have a full game in your hands, like it'll walk you through everything pretty, you know, at least in the story mode, it'll walk you through everything pretty easily. So From everything that you saw during your time, how easy or hard is it to break an opponent's racket? Because I think that's the thing I'm worried about. I haven't really played tennis, Mario Tennis much, so I'm not sure how good I can get those well-timed shots. And I'm like, oh god, if I play you, I just I, I just know you'd be able to break my racket. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's the awesome thing about it, because you can play in a few different ways. So even when I was playing against a computer, um, I was thinking about whether I wanted to aim for the racket and try to break it, or if I was afraid they were going to block it. If instead I should try and aim for the quarter or for a corner of the court and try and make it so they won't have a chance of getting to it at all. So it's a very it's a very much a risk versus reward type thing. You have to think dynamically about how you want to handle this. Um, because in my case, I was taking on mostly easy CPUs, so I think they weren't able to block all of my shots that consistently. So I was aiming for them you know, uh, uh, fairly often to try and break the racket. But if they had full health and were on like the final point, I was aiming for the corner of the court instead. That way they had no chance or, you know, had less of a chance of returning it. So it really is making you think about tennis in a whole new way. Now, if you do find all this to be gimmicky, by the way, you can't turn it off. But that's what I love about this is what, is what it adds to it. So I don't think I want to turn it off. Like I've really enjoyed so far what it adds to the tennis, you know, tennis gameplay. I mean, that's kind of what you want out of a Mario sports game is like, that it is the sport, but it also adds its own twist that does make it feel like a Mario sport. And well, and a, not just a twist, a good twist. Don't like the stupid mega mushrooms <laughs> from Ultra Smash and whatever stupid crap I had in that game. <laughs> good, good point. Good point. Actually, <laughs> speaking of that, uh, kind of related to the mechanics. Uh, how many different courts did you get to play on, or is it just one? 
I think I played, oh man, I can't remember offhand. I think I played on two or three different courts. I definitely played on the Forest Court, um, as well as, well, a couple of them were Forest Courts, I think. One against uh, DK, as well as I was in the uh, match against PD Piranha, which I think is his own court as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, I don't fully know. Um, and then also, uh, I was in the Sand, uh, or in the um, Basque Ruins court, at least. So at least three different courts, I think. Okay. And did they all feel different? Did they, I mean, was it nice to actually have a different court? <laughs> I, should, I should ask. Yeah, I mean, it was nice having not to the same not to the same court over and over and over. So yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a huge step up. But the thing is, if you if you take Ultra Smash out of the equation, Mario Tennis has always had like a huge variety of courts. So that's probably my most concerning element right now. Is while I like the variety I already saw, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be quite up to the level of like say Power Tennis, which had an amazing array of courts, including some amazing Mario themed ones. Whereas here, right now, the ones I've seen and played on all kind of have like a kind of slightly generic feel to them. Like, oh, here's a sand court, here's the court court, here's the, uh, <laughs> um, here's the, you know, forest court. Like, none of them feel like they have anything Mario inherent to them. Other than the fact that we're going through those same basic level tropes that Mario always does. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. But they do all feel different uh, regardless with different court properties, including how the forest court had like the prime plants that could eat your ball and spit it back at you, for instance. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, was there anything new to the mechanics that they introduced to you, or is it pretty much just everything that they had shown before? Yeah, so one thing that actually surprised me was how the trick shots work, because I, I didn't quite have a good grasp on them based on the trailers. So the way it works is it's actually tied to the right control stick. They can also double tap a button if you want as well. So if you if you press the right control stick in any direction, you'll jump in that direction to set distance, which is awesome for trying to get to shots that are too far away. The catch is that it's always a set distance, which means if you're off by even a little bit, like if you didn't quite gauge your distance from the ball quite right, you might either jump past the ball or not reach the ball. Now if you actually land the shot, not only do you return it, but you also get added energy to your energy gauge, which, uh, which I haven't really touched on yet, by the way. Um, you need energy to do all your zone shots, and you build energy either with trick shots or just returning a ball at all, or also charging shots, like how it worked in past games, only now you get energy based on a charge shot, including more energy if you fully charge a shot. But yeah, trick shots really change how you play the game as well, because it gives you a whole new way to return the ball um, that also adds a risk to how, you know, to how you go about it. Yeah, I like the fact that it... I, when they showed it during the direct, it seemed like you automatically went to it, and, and th that's the thing. As like I looked at it, I was like it seems like you're going to it, but it also seems like maybe they're just showing you not screw it up because they need you to show show how cool this is. Mm -hmm. uh, so hearing you talk about that, it's like yeah, it does seem like you're really going to need some skill to gauge exactly how far your character moves because it looks like each character does a trick shot in a different way, so they probably all have different ranges and whatnot. I don't know if the range uh, is different for each character, but they do all have different animations. I can definitely vouch for that much, at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, is there anything else to talk about with the exhibition, or uh, should we move on to our, our new story mode? Yeah, let's talk about the story. Okay, so I guess my big question right off the bat is, is it as animated? Do the characters have as much personality as Power Tennis? Because, you know, all the characters did so many different things and really had a great sense of just character uh, to them, and I'm really hoping that that's the case for this, because we haven't seen much yet. So, what would your take from what you've seen so far of the story mode? Yeah, I mean, the fact that we are talking about having a story mode at all <laughs> is already leagues beyond, well, both, um, you know, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, of course, but also, I think, any other Mario Tennis game. And as part of that, it actually has a, a pretty good sense of personality from what I've picked up on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's little cutscenes, of course, such as when you enter a boss fight. Um, also, anytime you enter a challenge from the world map, uh, you, there's a little intro for each, uh, you know, little like dialogue intro. And Mario and the characters all have like little you know, little pre-canned animations they do during it. Like with Mario, like looking around, for instance, if, if the character mentions something, you have to find. Uh, also, one of my favorite little touches is when you is when I went to the Basque Ruins, which I think is one of the first places you go to. But that's where all the story setup happened. <laughs> uh, Mario enters the court, like it's this really weird, you know, like rundown ruins area, and Mario's like, "What the? Oh, what the? <laughs> like he's a little <laughs> bit freaked out almost by what's going on." Um, yeah, so it has, yeah, it definitely has a sense of personality. So, did you learn anything more beyond Luigi finds this racket and uh, gets possessed along with Wario and Waluigi? In what I saw the story, I actually didn't see anything about Luigi. But what I learned is when Mario gets to the Basque Ruins, uh, this is when he learns about, this is when he learns the basic story details. Mm -hmm. And evidently, um, 
this character called Aster uh, is a guardian of King Basque, and he's speaking to you about this. Mm -hmm. And King Basque apparently goes way back. He used to be the kingdom of this island, or he used to be the king of this island. And he, uh, back then, found this mysterious racket called Lucian. And once he found that apparently all-powerful racket, the racket took over and decimated the kingdom. <laughs> so King Basque managed to strip the racket of its power, split it up into five power stones, which are hidden around the islands. You have to go find those power <laughs> stones by going to five different regions, being a forest, mansion, snow, sea, and the flames. Uh, and your goal is to find all five of those before Lucian does. Because Lucian's reawakened, because apparently um, the king hid it in this temple in the uh, the Basque ruins, but that was so long ago the ruins you know, are in ruin, uh, so the power that was hiding it there has like fallen fallen away, and Warrior and Waluigi apparently found the racket, and that's when all this bad stuff started happening. Uh, also, because Wario and Waluigi are motiv motivated by greed, the racket had no trouble taking them over. So that's why the racket <laughs> controls them. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty great. So I love, like, yeah, the, the story is, like, kind of ridiculous and kind of awesome, and I love the timing of it all tying really perfectly into the whole Infinity War gauntlet thing or the Infinity Gauntlet. It just... I wonder if that was intentional because, man, that's a lot of, like, really similar things. <laughs> I feel like it has to be, right? They must have known. It's like, oh, Infinity War is coming out right around the same time. Let's go with this stupid stupid off-the-wall story and <laughs> just go all at in the, on it. At the end, uh, Luigi just says, I don't feel so good, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. It just starts fading away. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, so so that's the story of the story mode. What's the actual gameplay of the story mode like? Is it just regular matches or do they have various um, missions for you to complete? Yeah, it's pretty basic, I think, overall, from what I saw. It's, um, so it, it reminded me most of how the story worked in the baseball games, which might be why you had uh, all those off-the-bat puns. <laughs> <laughs> um, where you basically travel point-to-point -point on the world map. There's little challenges along the way. Uh, so, for instance, when I, went, when I first went to the ruins, I had to do a little challenge to get me used to the controls. And that's when I learned all the story details. After that, I went on to the forest, where I had to take on DK in an exhibition match before he would allow me to continue deeper into the forest, at which point I took on the challenge you've seen before, the prana plants, where I had to destroy 30 prana plants um, within, a certain, within a certain time limit. Once I got past that challenge, then I took on PT freaking Piranha, <laughs> um, which is, I, I believe, the first boss fight of the game. And what's cool is these really do feel like bosses fights because he has an energy gauge once he runs out of energy uh that's when in, well, in order to run him out of energy you have to like keep hitting the ball at him uh once he runs out of energy his belly button gets exposed like in mario sunshine um and then you want to use a zone shot uh to try and hone in the ball target that belly button and then they'll actually deal some actual damage uh he can take three hits and then once you hit him three times uh he's over with but what's also really cool is how um uh, you know, Peter Prawn has, has his own attack, so not only does he return the ball at you, but he has his own powerful shots that can, you know, deal damage, or basically his zone shots. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, he'll send out, like, these little tornadoes, which you can either try and dodge, or you can try and hop over with your trick shots. So it almost felt like a little bit like a platformer, because you're hopping over his own attacks constantly, while trying to, like, return the ball at him. So it's a really neat mix of mechanics here, that, again, goes far beyond what we've seen in a Mario Tennis game. That sounds awesome. Like, it sounds legitimately entertaining, and I, I like when there's a game like this and the story mode is sort of focused on honing your skills, so that yeah. by the time you're done with story mode, maybe you'll have a little bit of an easier time fighting against other players. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's what story mode is primarily for, is to build up your confidence with mechanics. Uh, because, uh, for instance, in the um, Prana Plant Challenge, like an emphasis in that one seemed to be on using zone shots so we can more easily target the Prana Plants. And in that case, in that specific case, it really did feel like a shooter. Because you're just <laughs> using these zone shots constantly, just picking off these Prana Plants one by one. <laughs> now, I'm also looking over your notes here from the event, and you mentioned that you can actually level up Mario? Yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of that, actually. <laughs> that's pretty important. Uh, so after, I think, every challenge, um, you get experience points, so these will level up both Mario as a character as well as your racket uh, in areas like your um, your shot speed, your run speed, and your agility. Now on top of this too, uh, it also makes it um, easier for you to block shots, uh, gives you more forgiving time limits for some of those challenges. I, I think that's basically it. I mean, it, it really does sound promising. I've liked what I've seen so far, Derek. This is hitting all the right notes that Ultra Smash completely, completely messed up on. So <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a very good thing. But, well, is there anything else you wanted to say about uh, your time with Mario Tennis Aces? Just that I really had a lot of fun. Like, And even, I guess, too, I should mention, too, like the zone shots don't feel like an instant win button. Mm -hmm. Because even when you're using them, you have a very strict time limit 
four runs out and it just turns into a normal shot, I believe. Uh, you know, once you run out of energy. Mm -hmm. And even if you get it off in time, if you don't aim that ball right, uh, not only could it be easy for your opponent to get to, of course, uh, but also it's so easy to hit that ball out of bounds as well, which is really cool. Because that was something that was almost impossible to do in Ultra Smash. <laughs> uh, whereas here, it's surprisingly easy easy to hit that ball out of bounds, at least during zone shots. Yeah. So they are. So uh, so it reminded me of a much better balanced version of Power Tennis's um, of their special moves or whatever, where that felt like kind of an instant win button. Whereas here, it's not really the case. Well, I think that covers it for our preview of Mario Tennis Aces. So thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Mario Tennis and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.